Hi, I'm Justin Riley. Today on Wisconsin Doctors, urology. It's a fascinating specialty in the medical world with many fascinating subspecialties. We're here on location at Fort Healthcare to learn a little bit more about those subspecialties as well as the role that physical therapy plays in proper urological care and different patient concerns that you might be experiencing at home. My guests will include Dr. Craig Kosler, urologist here at Fort Healthcare, Becky McConnell, physical therapist, and Dr. Christopher Manicus, also a urologist here at Fort Healthcare. That's all coming up right here on Wisconsin Doctors. Stay right here. Welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We are here on location at Fort Healthcare, right in Fort Atkinson, and today's topic is urology. And I'm sitting next to one of the urologists here with Fort Healthcare, Dr. Craig Kosler. Dr. Kosler, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Good. Glad to be here. Yeah, first time on Wisconsin Doctors. Always a pleasure to meet new people. First time. Yeah. So why don't we start off by giving viewers a background of what is urology? Sure. So urology is a surgical subspecialty that deals with the, what we call the genitourinary system of the body, which is the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder, and then we also specialize in the male reproductive system mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so it's the, the urinary tract, is that the right, yep. the right uh, terminology? Exactly. Okay, urinary tract and then male reproductive system. You got it, okay. exactly. And what type of training is involved in becoming a urologist? Because that's a pretty specialized field to be in. Yep, it's considered a specialty mm -hmm. of surgery. So a urologist has gone on to medical school and then done five or six years of additional surgical training in general surgery for one or two years and then approximately four or five years in urologic surgery. And so all t in all total, most urologists in the United States go on to a specialized surgical training program in urology that in total takes five to six years. Okay, so now is that beyond the, the MD that you get? That is, that is correct. Wow. That's in addition to your schooling to be a physician. So something like a quarter of your life or something like that? A, a, <laughs> it's, a long, it's a long time. It's a long time. So, so, so yes. So, but you know what you're talking about, which is, right. which is great. So um, what are some of the areas that urologists typically specialize in? Um, so there's subspecialization mm -hmm. within urology that um, a common one in all surgeries is in urologic cancer. Mm. So urologic cancers make up about 25% of all human cancers. Uh, there's a specialization of kidney stones, which affect about 10% of people. Uh, there's a specialization in pediatric childhood problems, in female problems, and then some other specialty in special surgical techniques called minimally invasive techniques. There's also specialists in male, male infertility. And um, those are all additional areas that take one or two additional years of training to really consider yourself a subspecialist within that field. Wow, so there's a lot of different subspecialties within the umbrella of urology. Correct. That's incredible. So uh, you mentioned a, an interesting statistic, and I just want to make sure that viewers hear this again. 25% of all cancers are uro urological? Ur urologic, yes. Wow. Yep. Wow. So. And, and you guys can treat that or help to at least diagnose. Yeah, we are the, the prime diagnosers of those conditions and then u utilizing other specialty physicians like medical oncology, radiation oncology, we're involved with the treatment in, in those conditions. Okay, great. And we talked a little bit about um, you know, treating uh, serious problems such as cancer. What are some of the more common problems that urolo urologists can help with? So besides that end of the spectrum of seriousness, a lot of urology is also just working with patients' bodily functions mm -hmm. as they become bothersome, which is very common with age. There are many systems of the body that get worse with age, sure. and the urologic system is one of those. So we try to help improve patients' quality of life, diminish their bother, so they can maintain the, their function as, as that is important to them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's a certain level of independence, obviously, that comes with that. Sure. And as, as they get older, they tend to lose that independence. But if you can help them to maintain that independence, even if it's making different types of modifications for them, I think that's probably the goal. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. We really, urologists uh, as a profession, especially in a small community, we really are helping to improve patients' quality of life. Quality of life is so important. Speaking of community, uh, obviously you practice right here in Fort Atkinson. What brought you to Fort Atkinson? So uh, urologists in general, especially urologists who are general urologists, mm -hmm. they really have the opportunity to work with patients on problems that are going to be more chronic and will be lifelong. Mm -hmm. And so as a surgical specialty, we get to know our patients over a very long period of time. And being able to be a part of a community resource like Fort Healthcare that is really devoted to kind of lifting the quality of health within the broad area of Jefferson County really allows us to ply our trade with our neighbors, with people that we see every day, mm -hmm. and it really allows us to contribute to a community. Being a part of that community is so important. How long have you been here at Fort Atkinson? Uh, so this is now my 12th year here. 12 years, okay. And is this your first position then as a urologist? Yep, after I finished my training, this is where I started. Excellent, excellent. Well, being a part of the community, obviously something that's very important here at Fort Health, and there's a, a, a team approach. And we're gonna be talking with a physical therapist a little bit later on and uh, the other member of your team to find out how all of this, that the team approach kind of works in. So can you talk to us real quick before we go about that team approach? Just kind of give us a brief overview of that. Sure, well you'll be speaking with Becky McConnell who's mm -hmm. one of our physical therapists and then and then my urologic partner, Chris Manicus, uh, about some areas with regard to bladder function and bodily mm -hmm. functions. But that's the benefit of being in a community atmosphere because not only do we have this within our urology group, but speaking with primary care physicians, other surgical specialists, other medical specialists, it's literally as easy as us picking up a phone. So to be able to integrate that into patient care delivery is just a great thing to have at a, at a small community health institute or health facility like Fort Memorial. Dr. Craig Kosler, urologist here at Fort Healthcare, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thanks. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll be talking about how physical therapy plays a role in the overarching goals of urology. We'll be right back with more Wisconsin Doctors right here at Fort Healthcare. Hey folks, welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We are on location at Fort Healthcare right here in Fort Atkinson, and we've been learning a little bit about urology, and I'm actually really excited to learn about how physical therapy plays a pretty big role in urology. And I'm joined now by Becky McConnell, who's a physical therapist here at Fort Healthcare. Becky, how are you? I'm good. Hi. Good to have you with us. Good to be so, here. So uh, talk, <clears throat> talk to us a little bit about that. What role does physical therapy play in urology? So the type of physical therapy that we're talking about is a specialized therapy mm -hmm. that we offer here at Fort Healthcare. And it specifically focuses on the pelvic health of okay. women, men, and children. Mm -hmm. um, it is often considered um, a first line treatment in some of the conditions and symptoms that our urologists are seeing. Mm -hmm. So that could be bladder and bowel leakage. Mm -hmm. It could be bothersome urinary symptoms like urgency, frequency, not emptying your bladder all mm -hmm. the way. It could be pelvic pain, it could be pelvic organ prolapse in mm -hmm. women. The physical therapy can help before and after prostate surgeries in men. Mm -hmm. And in children, it can help with bedwetting and daytime accidents as well. So by partnering with these doctors, we can provide um, a treatment plan that's both collaborative and comprehensive. Collaborative, that's such an important word around here, is mm -hmm. collaboration, team <clears throat> effort. Um, you, you mentioned, we mentioned a little bit before we started the interview about the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about what is the pelvic floor? So the pelvic floor is actually a group of muscles mm -hmm. inside the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So they essentially form a muscular sling or hammock from okay. the pubic bone in the front okay. all the way to the tailbone in the back. Okay. So they function to support the organs, mm -hmm. but they also play a huge role in bladder and bowel function. Um, they also have a sexual function, but mm -hmm. they also help to contribute to just our overall core stability mm -hmm. as well. And these muscles are like any other muscle in our body, so they can be weak. Mm -hmm. And in that case, a therapy would be focused on um, strengthening mm -hmm. the muscles. They also can be tight, 
And in that case, the therapy would focus on relaxation. Sure. <coughs> so you mentioned uh, the core. Is the pelvic floor then considered part of the core? It is. Okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. So talk to us a little bit about how physical therapy can actually help with pelvic floor problems. Well, each patient will get a um, personalized assessment and treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And it may include pelvic floor exercises, which could be working on the strength, it could be working on coordination of the muscles with some of the surrounding uh, muscles like the abdominals. Mm -hmm. And it can be working on relaxing the muscles. Mm -hmm. um, we work on bladder retraining. We um, use strategies to help control symptoms and that mm -hmm. could be modifying your diet. It could be working on fluid management, mm -hmm. um, learning strategies to better control urges. Mm -hmm. uh, we use manual therapy to help correct for joint mechanics and soft tissue restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, we use generalized stretching strengthening exercises, and we also use uh, a therapy called biofeedback. Okay, cool. And we'll talk about biofeedback in just a second, but I'm kind of curious. To, I'm, I'm trying to visualize what some of these stretches and some of these movements look like. Can you give us an example of what some of those might be? Um, with the pelvic floor, since we can't see the muscles, right. we use a lot of visualization. Okay. So, um, uh, and the biofeedback, what I'll talk about next, helps with that. Yeah. Some of the surrounding muscles that can be involved with some of the dysfunction that we're talking about mm -hmm. um, can be in the abdominals okay. and some of the hip muscles um, and the lower back as well. Okay. All right. So we're doing stretches and strengthening exercises mm -hmm. where you're actively engaging muscles and relaxing the Correct. muscles. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. So, yeah, you <laughs> mentioned biofeedback. Let's talk a little bit about that. What is biofeedback and how can it help? Well, most people um, don't exactly know where these pelvic floor muscles are mm -hmm. or how to use them properly. So biofeedback is commonly used in pelvic floor muscle retraining. Mm -hmm. um, it can be... <clears throat> We use specialized sensors okay. to um, we place on the skin okay. that pick up muscle activity and it puts mm. it up on a computer screen. So then the patient will have visual cues, they'll have auditory cues, they can even play games with oh, wow. these muscles. So <laughs> it really helps to work on the coordination. It helps them to learn how to use their muscles better and that can improve their bladder function, their bowel function mm. and to decrease pain. Um, so with the pelvic floor, since I mentioned you can't see those muscles, right. this is extremely helpful right. to be able to have that feedback, to be able to learn how to use them properly. And um, the biofeedback is something that Fort Healthcare offers, and mm -hmm. we're the only one that offers it in Jefferson County. Oh, wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's good to know. So it's, it's interesting to me. It seems to me that <clears throat> the, the benefit of this is if you're not sure how or where or where those muscles are exactly, you've never really worked to engage or relax them in the mm -hmm. past, having this biofeedback kind of gives you that instantaneous feedback. So when you are kind of trying different things, you know, oh, that's that's what I need to do. And so you can kind of take that home with you. Is exactly, that exactly. So many people may have heard about these muscles mm -hmm. or have read about them or have um, been taught verbally to do an exercise. Right. Um, but they're kind of a tricky group of muscles. So sure. to be able to really have the best success with yeah. the exercise, you really want to make sure you're getting the right muscles. Yeah, absolutely. Who can benefit <laughs> from uh, this type of specialized physical therapy? Um, well, any um, women, men, and child mm -hmm. actually with any kind of pelvic floor mm -hmm. dysfunction. Um, I've mentioned that pelvic pain is, is one of the dysfunctions that we see. Yeah. And it's important to note that um, the, the pain in this area can present in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it can be in the pelvis, it mm -hmm. can be in the lower abdominal area, but it can also be in your lower back. It can oh, wow. be in your hips and your groin. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be pain in the rectal area. Mm -hmm. In men, it can be in the scrotal area. Mm -hmm. And in women, it can be in the vaginal area. Mm -hmm. So along with the pelvic floor, there's many different muscles and joints and nerves and tendons and ligaments that can be contributing to pain. Mm -hmm. And your physical therapist's job is to identify those culprits. So the, the, your um, physical therapist can help identify those culprits? Yeah, and I was gonna say, it, it's, it's sometimes hard to talk about pain mm -hmm. in this area, and it's hard to talk sure. about bladder and bowel function yeah. and symptoms. Yeah. Um, but I think the take home message is that they're very common symptoms mm -hmm. and that they can be resolved with appropriate treatment. So uh, it's something that should be discussed with your physician in order to um, decide if physical therapy might be um, a good treatment for you. Absolutely. Well, Becky McConnell, thank you so much for joining Thanks us today. Thanks for having me. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about patient concerns when it comes to urology. We'll be back with more Wisconsin doctors right here at Fort Healthcare.
And welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We are here on location at Fort Healthcare right here in Fort Atkinson. And today we've been talking about urology. We've learned a little bit about what urology is and how physical therapy can help out. And now we're going to learn about some patient concerns when it comes to urology. And I'm joined now by Dr. Chris Manicus, who is part of the urology team here. Dr. Manicus, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Justin. Good. Good to have you with us. So obviously patient concerns. What are some what are some bathroom issues that people should never ignore? I mean, people have those, but sometimes, you know, in our busy lives, we tend to ignore them. What are some things that should never be ignored? You know, I think some of the things we encounter all too often are people that let symptoms go that they think are normal and really should have told their doctor about a long time ago. Right. Things like ever seeing visible blood in your urine, mm -hmm. okay? That's nothing you ever want to let go. Uh, infections that seem to persist or mm -hmm. recur uh, frequently are something you really want to bring up to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And certainly if treatment of that infection um, uh, doesn't take away the symptoms completely. Sure. So that, um, losing urine control or being unable to urinate, absolutely bring that up to your doctor. Yeah, so some of these things are, are things like, you know, uh, losing urine or bladder control, I think are some things that people might not think that, oh, I should go see my doctor right away, but that you're saying that that is something that they should go see their doctor for right Absolutely, away. and incontinence is not something that should be considered a normal part of aging, right. okay? Uh, lots of folks might have issues as um, after surgeries or they've uh, delivered a few kids right. and they can't go for a run without leaking. Yeah. Um, there's options available yeah. that don't necessarily mean invasive surgery right. to help you reach your goals of urine control. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about incontinence or losing urine control. Is that You said that's not a normal part of aging. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. Um, you've got uh, a wide spectrum of normal. Mm -hmm obviously. Right. Um, you're going to have uh, anywhere from dry as a bone, day and night, to sure. having no control whatsoever. Right. And it's those folks that really struggle, that they're, um, they're embarrassed to talk about it with their provider. They sure. think this is just the way it's got to be. Right. And the last thing I want them mm -hmm. to think at home is that there's nothing that can be done. We have many different options. As I said, doesn't necessarily mean to be uh, surgical, but um, you know, whether it's behavioral changes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, physical therapy right. that Becky talked about earlier, um, medications, you know, we help you reach your goals knowing that this is maybe something that's bothering you and we're here to help you. And let's talk a little bit about some of those ways that um, you can get kind of back on track that are non-surgical. What are some of the ways uh, uh, to treat bothersome bathroom issues? Yeah, you know, um, one of the big obstacles, I think, in, in talking to patients is that I, I don't want to come in, I don't want to have that invasive test done, I don't mm -hmm. want to do surgery, mm -hmm. what is there anything you can do for me? Um, uh, we really focus on what uh, short of even medications or surgery that can uh, help you reach your goals, whether that's watching how much you're drinking or mm. what you're drinking that could mm. be bladder irritants, mm. looking at the medications or other health uh, issues unrelated to the bladder necessarily mm. that could be making your symptoms bothersome to you. So you really focus on the patient, figure out what's uh, what, what really bothers them day and night mm -hmm. and um, uh, help them eliminate those issues. Real quick, can you just give us some examples of what might be bladder irritants as far as fluids that someone might intake? Yeah, you bet. So common irritants uh, that often go overlooked are uh, artificial sweeteners. Mm. And I, I can't tell you how much how many fluids like sneak in, you know, whether over, you buy those flavored waters and those sure. Dasani drops or whatever drops, they've got these ultra concentrated artificial sweeteners that are really irritating to some people. It's not everybody, right. and you don't get dogmatic about it. If you right. cut it out and you get better, great, yeah. all right? Uh, caffeinated drinks, sure. um, even coffee, decaf. So these are some things that you try to bring up and as folks realize, you know, I really do drink about a pot and a half of coffee a day, and yeah. I realize that that's sending me to the bathroom. <laughs> right. So, you know, sometimes it might think common sense, but you get into these habits and you try to get away from the bad ones. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, these are some non-surgical methods, obviously. Yeah. What happens when these fall short of having people reach their goals? So, again, it's goal-directed. Mm -hmm. You look at the patient, you figure out what's bothering them, you target your therapies on that, and uh, whether it's uh, taking too long in the bathroom, there's medications mm -hmm. to maybe help with that. Or you're running in the bathroom, you can't make it fast enough, there might be medications mm -hmm. to help that. Everything comes with some side effects, and so it's a risk-benefit. Uh, if those medications fail, there might be some other diagnostic studies that are necessary to make sure there isn't something that requires surgery. And if surgery is an option, we talk about the types of surgeries that are available that might uh, help you regain control or 
in some situations spend less time in the bathroom. We have a lot of parents of small children, or children of all ages, who watch this program. Um, can you talk to those parents a little bit about bedwetting issues? A lot of times when that comes up, that's a, a concern for parents. Is this a, a normal occurrence for some kids to have? So a very uh, common thing in the clinic, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks don't think that the urologist takes care of these things, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. um, if you've got a little boy or girl that's into school age and maybe having daytime issues mm -hmm. where they're having accidents mm -hmm. or nighttime accidents, mm -hmm. I really, the last thing I want patients to have parents to feel is that there's no way to help those kids. Mm -hmm. and. Oftentimes, in the vast majority of times, no medication is necessary, but with careful behavioral changes and, as Becky mentioned, physical therapy to help kids understand how to go to the bathroom better that right. will ultimately help these issues, help them regain control, get that confidence back. It's yeah. some of the most rewarding circumstances are um, helping these kids stay dry, they, they can go to that sleepover, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's a huge quality of life improvement. Yeah, quality of life for kids is important as it is for adults too. So, yeah, absolutely. Dr. Chris Manicus, thank you so much for joining us and for the information today. It's been a fascinating conversation. We should have you back. Yeah, you bet. Really all a right. pleasure. Thanks, all Justin. Right. That's all the time we have for Wisconsin Doctors. We've been here on location at Fort Healthcare. From all of us here at Channel 57, we invite you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time.